after he passed away, uh, my telephone started ringing back in San Antonio. And, of course, you know, how did I feel? You know, to me, uh, a great, great loss because of what this great man, you know, meant to me. And one of my former teammates, uh, Mr. Steve Jadinik, I got a call somewhere within the train of, uh, of the phone calls, and he says, well, Cher, what do you think? I say, uh, when we leaving? He say, tomorrow morning. And the next that morning, we were on, we were uh, in a car heading to El Paso, and been here, been here ever since. And there's no other way that I would not have been here, you know, to be with this man, you know, who in my life has been such a powerful uh, inspiration to me. Yesterday, today, and always forever in my heart. My fondest memory. You know, I think you run out of batteries if I really start trying to uh, tell you that. My fondest memory, you know, was, uh, you know, when you talk about, uh, you know, March 19th, 1966, you know, that's, it's a great, that's a great uh, uh, impact for any young athlete. But the fondest memory was, I think, it came later on when just for the first time Coach Haskins said, you know, to me, he says, you know, uh, he says, Shallow, you know, I, I, I really appreciate all the years that uh, you played for me. And, he, you know, he told me he loved me. And if you want to consider the fondest memory, you know, I, that, you know, he told me he loved me. And, I, I, you know, even though while playing for him, that, that probably was something I would not have believed, you know. But throughout my tenure, he did love me. And that will be also something that will be in my heart forever. You got an opportunity to be a little closer to Coach than most. I know you coached her as well for a little while. Yes, that's true. Um, playing with, playing uh, um, on his team, I was just whipping dog. You know, a little bit as his assistant coach, it kind of the flavor was still there. You know, and I tell you, when when my when I go to heaven somewhere along the way, I guess I'll still be in his high category as one of the whooping dogs. You know, and but you know, it, it was fun. You, you know, being around him, I, I don't think you'll ever get out of the the feeling of being intimidated. You know, one time, I, you know, I was assistant coach. And he started yelling at someone. I was sitting in the bleachers, and he said, "Just get over here!" And I started getting them. I said, "Whoa, yeah, I'm a coach, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm one of the coaches here." But that, you know, is just one of the great stories that myself and I'm sure all of my athletes, you know, can tell you all. What did he teach you about being a man? You know, the first thing, you know, that's that's something that you know. He, number one, taught us how to take negative energies and turn them into positive action. You know, you got to remember the, you got to remember the time. You know, there was uh, the great, it was the war. You know, racism was a, a big impact in all of our hearts. You know, he taught you how, you know, to stay focused on what your goal was. You know, uh, a, a, a better way of saying is that Coach Haskins lived to be a winner. He lived to be a winner. And not just being a winner with the X's and O's, but how to live to be a winner uh, in what we're doing now, exercising the life after athletics. And, you know, everybody has the ability to be, uh, the ability to be a basketball player, but it takes that powerful discipline to be a champion. And that's something that he definitely instilled in my life and, you know, when you talk about that team, it's, you know, not a me team, it's a we team. And all of us also carry that big trait in our lives.